So let's kick off the part 3, the best part of all this year we benchmark because uh, it is the end of the year when the best games come out. So let's kick off with Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. I was able to play this game with low settings, textures on median and I had to go tweaking on the config file in order to play this game on this laptop and I had to set a resolution scaling of 60%, so the game looks very blurry, I'm using TXAA, because I prefer to have blur than pixels all over the place, and with these settings I was able to get an average of 36 frames per second and a minimum of 26, so I think it's a very reasonable performance in my opinion for such old hardware, but again this is a very low resolution, just like those very demanding games on Switch, just like Doom on Switch, you are going to get a very low resolution, but still, it is playable, and you can play the game from the beginning to the end, so it's a, it's awesome, in my opinion, so that's it. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, running on this shitty laptop, this shitty graphic card, amazing. FIFA 18, so this game uses the Frostbite 3 engine, the same engine behind Battlefield and Need for Speed games lately. So I was able to get 60 frames per second or above of it by using 720p resolution and using the low settings. So I just disabled anti aliasing I'm using the low settings. And 60 frames per second, it's just perfect to play this game. During the replays, the laptop lags a little bit between the 20 to 30 frames per second, but who cares about the replays? We care about the gameplay, right? And during the gameplay, you really get those 60 frames per second. So I think it's amazing and it just runs. You just need to run at low settings and you will have a perfect, perfect gameplay. Alright, so that's it. FIFA 18. We're starting to hear the away fans who haven't had too much to cheer in terms of the match and now they're jeering because the home players are starting to waste time at every opportunity. Well, the writing is on the wall. They're trying to change that, but uh, the home team doing everything in their power to deny them any kind of rhythm. They'll get a free kick for that. Dishonored Death of the Outsider, this is a standalone expansion pack, so you don't really need the Dishonored 2. So this game follows the same steps as Dishonored 2, it uses the Void Engine, a big modification of ID Tech 5, and just like Dishonored 2, it is an optimized mess, but still you will be able to play the game. So in order to play the game I had to reduce the game to the minimum settings possible, but instead I used a TXAA and I had used a dynamic resolution, that is on the options, you can set the dynamic resolution to act when the game it is at 29 frames per second and choose performance. By doing this the game will use um, a resolution scaling of 50% every, every time the game goes below those 30 frames per second, which is pretty much 90% of the time the game will use that uh, resolution scaling. So what you are going to feel playing this game, you are going to feel that the game will be very very blurry because of the TXAA. If you disable the TXAA you are going to find a lot of pixels, just like Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. 
And so, with these settings I was able to get an average of 30 frames per second and a minimum of 20. You will see that the game will be at 30 frames per second most of the time. So I think it's perfectly playable, especially if you play with stealth. If you want to be a badass and jump in midair and shoot everyone very quickly, might prove to be a little bit difficult, but this under it's all about stealth, and so if you play in a stealthy way, I'm pretty sure that this frame rate will be enjoyable uh, to play this game. All right, so that's it. This under death of the outsider using one of the worst optimized engines on the PC and the consoles, but still managing to run at 30 frames per second. Amazing. So let's switch to Pro Evolution Soccer 2018 that runs a very good engine which is Fox Engine but I don't have good news to you guys. Unfortunately by using the low settings and by reducing the game resolution to the minimum which in this game it is 720p I only, I only was able to get 30 to 35 frames per second which is really bad it's not unplayable but it it doesn't really feel natural to play you know at 30 to 35 35 frames per second on a football game so it is a little bit all over the place so if you are thinking if you should get FIFA 18 or if you should get Pro Evolution Soccer 2018 if that depends on well or bad the game runs let me say that you should buy FIFA if that is your doubt if you really care about Pro Evolution as a game, then, well, the performance is not really great, it's not unplayable, but it's a little bit weird, okay? I just think you should know that, alright? So that's it, Pro Evolution Soccer 2018. Project Cars 2 uses the same engine as the first game and the performance it is very similar so it is it uses the Madness engine and so in order to run this game I had to run this game with 720p minimum settings I raised the textures to medium because this game doesn't consume too much VRAM and still by using textures on medium that is a lot of free VRAM to use but what worries me is the performance Project Cars 1 and 2 it is a simulation game, it is a game where you need to have um, you know as much frame rate as you can and the maximum I could got was an average of 48 frames per second and a minimum of 37 unfortunately during the rain tracks the game can even go to 30 frames per second and if the thing it is very intense you might even see lower frame rate than 30 frames per second so if you are going to play this game in a casual manner, I think that it will be very acceptable. But if you intend to play this at a very professional uh, level, in a way, in a very competitive way, in a simulation way that you would love to play with, I don't really recommend it to buy this game for this level. Okay? So that's it. Project Cars. NBA 2018, developed with the 2K in-house engine, so I was able to play this game with 720p median settings with a frame rate above 30 frames per second during the gameplay. The replays are pretty much between the 20s and the 30 frames per second. This is another game that feels more natural at 60 frames per second, and if you want you could play at 60 frames per second by using worse resolution than the 720p and by using ultra low settings which looks very ugly but NBA it's it's a little bit more responsive so I think that those 30 frames per second uh, I think it's it's reasonably well in this game comparing to FIFA or Pro Evolution so I think you can play this game with median settings with frame rate around those 30 frames per second and replays between the 20s and the 30s you still get reflections on the floor good textures so, it's not a bad experience at all, especially for how weak these uh, graphic cards are. So, good stuff. Okay, David, thanks. Green, the screen. Curry, Curry, Curry. 
Iguodala against Lopez. It's Curry outside. Rebound by the Bulls. Miritic has got three rebounds so far in the game. Dunn with it. Curry meets him. Dunn misses. Warriors have gone 2 of 5 here, making 40% so far to start out the game. When you watch the Warriors play, their offense is a work of art. So Shadow of War. I just tested the benchmark, I didn't test the game. So this game uses the Manaway Firebird engine. And in order to properly, more than less, play the game, you need to play the game with 960 per 450. 40. So, yes, it's uh, kind of a switch resolution on those demanding games and using the minimum settings possible. By using these settings, I got an average of 31 and the minimum of 22. So, you can expect uh, sometimes the game um, to drop the frame rate from the 30s to 20s. But if you play with a gamepad and if you are not intending to go all blazing, all guns blazing with an arrow or an archer and arrow. I think it will be fine even playing with those 20 frames per second. It won't be a pleasant experience at all, but still, you can start and finish the game. Alright? So that's it. Elex. It's a game developed using the Genome Engine, the same engine behind Goring 3 and all the Reason series, and yes, you guess it. It is also developed by Parenia Bytes, that is also the developers behind the Goring series and the Reason series. I'm not really sure why, but I always fall in love with the RPGs of Pyrenia Bytes. It's not because of the graphics at all, and it's not, I don't know, it's not because of the fighting system, which is probably the worst fighting system I've ever seen, ever, okay? Since Gothic 3, Risen, and also Ewex have probably the worst fighting system I've ever seen, but still, I always fall in love with these RPGs, and in order to fall in love with these RPGs on my laptop, I had to play the game with the low settings, with a 50% of resolution scaling. So the game will be... Uh, it will be very pixelated, okay? It will look really bad, but it will run fine above those 30 frames per second, with a minimum of 32, and an average of 38, and a maximum of 55. Still, I still get shadows at least in this one, but damn, that is a lot of pixelation in here. Okay, so that's how you run UX on the graphic cards with on the title. You should come with me. See something more than goalie. WWE 2018 it still uses their 2K in house engine, but this time they decided to upgrade the lightning system of the game. And so, despite the game barely run, I mean the WWE 2017 barely run it already, now with the upgrade, just forget about this game because. Even choosing the lowest resolution possible, I could go with the game, which was 720p, and by using the minimum settings, I got a frame rate around the 50 to 25% with frame times all over the place. So it's completely an unplayable experience. So I, I thought you should know this. If you if you plan on buying to, uh, WWE 2018 for the graphic cards listed on the title, just don't do it because it runs like crap and you won't be able to play decently the game. Talking about running like shit, let's go to Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. So this game runs using Vulcan, okay, which is usually more supported on IMD, and even IMD sometimes have troubles, the, the old graphic cards. So by using the 720p resolution scaling to 50% and the minimum settings, I was... I was possible, it was possible to get an average of 34 frames per second, and the minimum of 21, so you can expect frame rates lower than the 30s, which is not a good thing, you know, for FPS games, especially Wolfenstein, which is extremely fast paces. And that is amazing, but not with this laptop. 
Okay, so this was pretty much on the first level, but as soon as we reach Manhattan, which is a little bit more open, the performance will be all over the place. So, I don't know, guys. You can play this game from the beginning to the end, but I, I just want to say that the graphics will look awful, okay? And the performance will be all over the place. It will be really bad, but it is up to you. This game, the way that is running, it's possible to finish the game, okay? But it's not going to be great by any means, okay? It's just the thing that I want you to know. So that's it. Wolfenstein 2, the new Kavasas. Nio, so this game was ported from the consoles to the PC and it was expected to be a very bad port and in fact it is a bad port, not as much bad as it was Dark Souls at the time but still you won't be play, you won't be play blah, blah, blah. you won't be able to play this game decently I am playing here with the minimum settings possible and I'm getting 50 to 20 frames per second with frame times all over the place so, Nio is an extremely difficult game, and with this frame rate, it's just completely impossible. I'm not going to say impossible because there is always a jerk that can do it, but it's just a bad experience overall, okay? Just don't buy the game. So, let's jump to Call of Duty World War II, developed with the Infinity Ward engine, completely updated. In order to properly. <laughs> properly haha <laughs> play this game I had to play this game with normal settings which is pretty much the minimum with 50% resolution scaling and the amazing set to pre 2 times X 75% and textures on medium so the graphics will look extremely blurry okay but it's passable at least you don't see pixels all over the place which is a good thing so, by using these settings, you are going to get an average of 40 frames per second and a minimum of 27. So, basically, you are going to get a frame rate above 30 frames per second, which I think it's very acceptable for the single player version of the game. Okay? So, that's it. Call of Duty World War II. On the floor! Keep us moving! Need for speed payback, I was able to play this game with minimum settings and the amazing set to TAA to blur everything and to not have pixels. And I did use TAA because I decided to go with a resolution scaling of 50%. To do this I had to tweak the game just like I did with Hellblade Senua Sacrifice. If you want to know how it's done go to my channel and search for the Need for Speed Payback video. Uh, there is uh, some sort of tutorial there where I explain how to do it. So by doing these tweaks I was able to get a minimum frame of 28, an average of 34 and a maximum of 40 frames. So pretty much what you are going to get 
it's a 30 fps experience for need for speed payback which i think it's uh, it's very good it's very good it's bad visually but it's very good in performance because both consoles also play this game at 30 frames per second so really acceptable despite how pixelated or blurry it's going to look damn But do you know what blurs my vision? It is the quantity of microtransactions that Star Wars Battlefront 2, well, right now it doesn't have any, but they are going to activate at some point again. But yeah, let's talk now about the single player version, okay? So Star Wars Battlefront 2, I'm able to run the game with low settings, which is pretty much the minimum settings you can go for, but by using a resolution scaling set to 78%. In this game, you don't need to go and co you don't need to go uh, to the config files in order to have this because that is a slider on option you can use in order to reduce the resolution scaling to 78% and then in this gorgeous environment in this gorgeous jungle with uh, trees and you know grass all over the place and uh, trees falling down just like in crisis I was able to get an average of 39 frames per second and a minimum of 27, which I think it's really good. Frostbite 3 is an impressive engine regarding graphics and, op and optimization, especially when it's nice messing around with it, which is the case. So it runs pretty fine, the single player portion of the game. As for the multiplayer, you can expect more or less the same performance. It's just, it might not be that good because the multiplayer might be full with people playing at 60 frames per second. And there is a big difference playing at uh, 30 frames per second against players with 60s. But if you intend to play the single player version, I think it's fine. It runs fine. And that's good. Okay? Star Wars Battlefront 2. Unknowns Battlegrounds, this is still the early access version of the game, okay, so this game uses Unreal Engine 4, and uh, there are some rumors, and also some proofs too, that the final version of the game did improve the performance, I'm not really sure if we get that improved performance in this system, but like I said, this is the early access version of the game, so I'm running with 720p, very low, section, very low settings with exception of the textures, which are set to low, because we have the VRAM for that. And the resolution scaling set to the minimum, which in this game it is 70%. By using these settings, I got an average of 30 frames per second and a minimum of 18. It's not a pretty way to play, let me tell you, because the game, what you're going to see, it's the game playing between the 20s to 40 frames per second. You will find frame rate lower than 30 frames per second lower than 30 frames per second very often let me tell you so it might not be the best way to enjoy the game but i do hope that the final version that it was released a couple of days ago might have improved the performance and i intended to test the game again later i just don't know when because i don't have time and i don't own the game this game was landed at the time for me to test so i need to contact uh, my patron ex-patron alberto to see if he lends me the game again in order for me to try it again and see if the game did improve the performance or not if the game goes near 30 fps more often then in that case we we might have when announced battlegrounds running decently on this pc but the way it was on the early access like you are seeing in here, it is eh, more than more as acceptable. It's not for everyone, you know. So that's it. When it owns Battlegrounds, the early access version, yeah, it runs like poop. Oops.
WRC7 developed using the Kitty HD engine, the same engine behind Fuera Altura Insanity, actually the same developers also. So in order to properly play the game I had to reduce the resolution to 720p and use the minimum settings. So the minimum frame rate was 38, which is very good, and an average of 48. During the rain tracks it might get a little bit worse as you can expect but well it's still playable okay but the only downside is that with the minimum settings there is no shadows so the lighting feels a little bit weird without shadows and all the environment but still it's playable if you don't care about shadows but if you enable shadows the performance well goes down the toilet completely so that's the only way I had to, to enjoy this game decently above those 30 frames per second and that's the way that I recommend with the graphic cards listed on the title. Okay, that's it. The WRC7. Next, please. Long in the left four, Titan, keep it. And right four in the flat left, Titan five, keep it. Right five, caution, break, square right, tarmac, and left six, long, bumps, in the left three, keep it, open, 30. Right four, break, in the left three, tightens two, gravel. And right five, 40. So let's finish our benchmarks over here of this year with H1Z1. This game was using Forge Light Engine, the same engine of Planet Side 2, which was a game that uh, looked like Battlefield, but in a fur futuristic level. So, in order to properly play H1Z1, which was on free weekend on Steam, and that is why I tried the game recently, uh, I was able to play this game with minimum settings and resolution scaling set to 700 and, uh, oh my god, with resolution scaling set to 75%. And so by using these settings I was able to get an average of 36 frames per second and a minimum of 27. It's not really bad. It's not really bad indeed. And actually the low, the low settings are not really that bad. So... Overall, that's it. That's all that I have for this year. There are more benchmarks, obviously, that I didn't create it for these three parts. But uh, if you want to subscribe my channel, you should know that... Oh, also, this game on minimum also don't have shadows. I, I just wanted to say that. But like I was saying, if you subscribe my channel, you will keep up with every single video, okay? This is just a resume of all the benchmarks or almost all the benchmarks or more important benchmarks that I have done during the year. I make a lot of benchmarks, so just stay tuned for the benchmarks of the latest games. Unfortunately, Assassin's Creed Origins, Evil Within 2 and Injustice 2, it's not in here yet, but I intend to benchmark this game as soon as possible, as soon as I get my hands on it. Okay, so guys, Happy New Year, okay, hope you enjoyed the video, and I do hope to see you soon. Goodbye.